Hello, hopefully now we are here. Um, not positive if this is working. Let's see if I come through on my phone, which is where I will be checking the chat. Um, yeah, I think we're finally coming through. Welcome to all the combo lords. Oh no, I gotta turn the audio off here or we're gonna get some double trouble feedback. We're already getting some wild looping with woo, things flying around to different dimensions. But really what we wanna open up here is our Desmos and that was what I was teaching a student in music, the SpongeBob SquarePants theme. That's what they wanted to learn and we turned it into piano. That's a website if you want piano called MuseScore, but we're pulling up our Desmos here. Now, I got a few equations right here because today on our Desmos, we're going to be looking at some circles and some important traits of circles and the grid points they pass. Now, I hinted in one of my shorts recently that when you make a circle with a radius of something like four, the only grid points that hit on the circle that are an actual grid point, uh, meaning the X and Y coordinate or whole numbers, are on the axes. We don't get any fun special ones. But if we make a circle with five as our radius, not only do we get the axes ones, but we get three, four, and four, three. And we get negative clones of those. We actually get eight extra points it touches, but all of them have one of their coordinates three. Oh, there's my cat Dandelion. You wanna join the stream, baby? All of them have one of their coordinate three, one of their coordinate four. I'm going over here so I can pet my cat at the same time. And those might be positive or negative. So there's eight combos of like three, four, three, negative four, negative three, four. 4, 3, negative 4, 3, and stuff. And all of those really describe the same thing in a mirrored way. We not only have a symmetry on this axis and all four of these quadrants, but if we graphed the line y equals x, we also have a symmetry along here, where like that point mirrors that, that point mirrors that. And I'm gonna let Dandelion out because I don't think he wants to look at the graphs right now. Now, since we're doing that mirroring, if we find anything special, we only need to look at one eighth of the graph. Um, we're going to look at this as our main playing field. The points larger than y equals zero, but lower than y equals x. So in that quadrant, we're gonna find some interesting stuff because if we look at that point, now I'm gonna make a slope where we have three X over four. We're hitting that notable point, four, three. This actually draws out a triangle. We could even draw the triangle if we want. There's the bottom part, there's the side part, and we can see that's part of a triangle, that's part of a triangle, that's part of a triangle. Which triangle is this? The classic three, four, five. Now this one is so beautiful and notable. If we made a little circle in there, I don't know the coordinates to make this happen, but the circle that's called its in circle that touches all of its sides once would have a radius of one and would split the sides into these little one, two, three combos because this three, four, five triangle is magnificent. Now we get eight of them because they have all the clones, but that's the only special Pythagorean triple, meaning we could make a triangle like this where all the sides are integer lengths and also meaning geometrically the only combos where a squared plus b squared equals c squared works with all integers, integers being whole numbers. Um, and we get one here on five. This is our first circle that will do that. Do, do, do. These don't hit any special grid points. Now let's kill these, but let's note this line. We hit one when we made it five, right? Five is the radius squared of the circle here. Well, no, five is the radius, but we put radius squared here to make the equation work. And when we had a radius of five, it worked. 
Is there any other circles that will hit this line on a grid point? Well, when does this line hit a grid point? This line hit a grid point when we went over four and up three. So if we go over four and up three again, this line hits the point eight six. So what if we make our thing twice as big? A circle with radius of 10 will hit another. We get another Pythagorean triple, the six eight 10 triangle. And in fact, if I take this line and I decided to, let's just make circles where we're going to um, copy this and just say we have a circle with radius five, we have a circle with radius 10. Oops, well, that went crazy. 10 to the power of two we want. We have a circle with radius 15. And these are all hitting at points that describe Pythagorean triples. The four, three, four, five right triangle, the six, eight, 10 right triangle, the nine, uh, nine, 12, 15, right? Or is that, what is that one gonna be? Yeah, nine, 12, 15 right triangle. Um, and if we kept doing that, we would get all of the clones of the three, four, five, all of its children. Well, in a way you can make trees where all Pythagorean triples are children of this three, four, five. But for, these are especially children, the ones that are like clones of it going upward. Now, three, four, five is called a, a primitive Pythagorean triple because three and four and five are all co-prime to each other as a trio. They have no factors in common that could shrink down. Like if you encountered six, eight, and 10 as a set, which are this guy's legs, then six, eight, and 10 have a factor of two in common. If you shrink that down, you get three, four, five. So the three, four, five right triangle uh, is primitive as a Pythagorean triple, and these are clones of it. Now, we got infinite Pythagorean triples there, but are there any others? Well, let's say we want to go up through my range was 25 as a possible thing. So we're going to need to clone some circles to just hit these ones because we are going to get um, all every other one up here up through 25 is going to give us five times that the three, four, five or one of its children hit. Now, what else happens in this range? If that 25 is my outer range, the question is, are there any other circles that hit grid points? Now, if we wanna be clearer about where the grid points are, we can activate a function that's sine of pi of x times sine of pi of y equals zero, which happens to be the grid. That's having trouble seeing it at that scale, but if we zoom in, we can see that's the grid. So we're wondering, in this circle that I made x squared plus y squared equals a squared, which now I can adjust, where's my adjustable one? There's this adjustable one. We're wondering if this new moving one, now let's color code it to make it easy. All of the children of the three, four, five are going to turn red. Um, and then I'm going to change the color of the other one. All right, this black one is our adjustable one. We're wondering if this is going to hit any more grid points that aren't on the axes. Now these technically describe a Pythagorean triple. Zero squared plus four squared equals four squared. Not a very interesting triple. Doesn't count because we don't allow zero, but if we allowed it to be just any non-negative integer instead of a positive integer, these create what is known as degenerate triangles. I didn't name them, they're actually called that. Degenerate triangles are when it's flat, when one of the sides is zero. <clears throat> so here we have the boring ones on the axis that describe zero squared plus something squared equals that th same thing squared. We're looking for grid points apart from that where it might touch. Now the red ones are all the children of that. And if we go out here, we're not gonna see any quite yet. And in fact, we're not gonna even see any before this one. That's how efficient the three, four, five right triangle is, is that it and its first kid 
or before the next one is possible. Now, if we look at 11 here, we're going and we can see not quite missing, missing, missing. We've missed all the grid points. If we go to 12, we can see do, 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 that one looks pretty close, but not quite. Do, 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 we missed all the grid points. If we go to 13, we can see do, 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 and it appears like they may have hit one. Well, yes, it hits exactly 12.5. Now let's make a line with that slope. Y equals 5x over 12. So we have hit this. It doesn't matter where this new line hits the red ones. Let's make the red ones line be red like it. So that red line, wherever it hits one of these circles, makes one of the children of 3, 4, 5. But we have a new right triangle here. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And it's true. 25 plus 144 is 169. Uh, 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared. And so we have hit one there. Now, it also means that we are going to hit a second one within our domain of 25 that we are looking for. Um, since I cast my range of A to go up in steps, what I did here is I made the steps go up by one instead of increments, so I have to have an integer for that. And we're going up to 25. Um, so uh, in that range, we get another one of these. This circle was when we had 13. Now let's just draw one of those circles in black because we've found one. So uh, 13 we want and color it black. And then what we can do is let's double this. So 13 doubled is 26. And we found another not quite in the range. Never mind. Da, 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 da. Slightly out of the range. However, wait, no, here's the weird thing. Yeah. So slightly out of the range, but the coordinates are not too far off. 10 squared plus 24 squared equals 26 squared. So we do have another one there. Close enough, we'll leave the circle. We'll make this circle black because even though it's out of the 25 range, it is another Pythagorean triple. And of course, we would keep, keep hitting them for the kids on that as well. Now, what other ones may be lurking in here? Let's zoom in a little bit. That was 13. Mm -hmm. And... 14 doesn't seem to hit any. 15 is there. 16. Do, 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 do. 17. Do, 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 do. Is that a hit? Do, 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 do. That appears to be a hit. Ba, 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 ba. Yep. 8 squared plus 15 squared must be equal to 17 squared. That's one that I don't remember the trio, but this is proof that it exists. 8 squared plus 15 squared must be 17 squared. So now we get to make a new one there. So we don't necessarily, yeah, we'll give it a line. Or I don't know. This, we're getting close to the end of our range, so let's just remember them at this point. We got our 8 squared, 15 squared, 17 squared. We could shoot a line and duplicate that out if we wanted to. Now, in this range, I think there was one that had, um, there's one other interesting one here. I just remember there's one at the maximum of 25. So let's see, are we at our maximum? Yeah, it's just showing under a red one for some reason. So on this red 25 one, if we go, do, 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 do. well, now let's be in the domain where we were. So going up the 25 one, not only do we hit red at this point, so that was a hit. 15 squared plus 20 squared is 25 squared. But look at that. 7 squared plus 24 squared is also 25 squared. Interesting, huh? There's another Pythagorean triple. 7 squared plus plus 24 squared has to be the radius of this circle, 25 squared. So 
I believe that's all the Pythagorean triples within this little domain. If we kept playing this game, we could get more and more and capture all of the Pythagorean triples. And they're a really cool geometric thing because not only do they show up in right triangles and right triangles show up everywhere. Like you can deconstruct so many things in right triangles. It's also secretly just the distance formula because we're saying which ones are a distance of a whole number from the origin. Very simple question, which grid points are a whole number distance from the origin? If, if you didn't think about it, you would think that's a completely different question than which whole numbers can be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But it's actually the same question. And the x and y coordinates of the grid point represent the a and b, and the distance represents the c. Um, and that's because right triangles are hiding everywhere, including the distance formula. If you've ever seen a distance formula that, like, uh, whatever. If you've ever seen a distance formula that goes, like, it equals the square root of change one direction squared plus the change another direction squared. Imagine if you squared both sides. Then you have some change squared plus change squared equals the original thing squared. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So when you square root a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you get the distance formula in two dimensions. Um, and when we play this game, we find our Pythagorean triples that are both a geometry question. Well, that wasn't one, but this one. Both a geometry question and a number theory question. Number theory where we study integer solutions to stuff. And so there's all sorts of fun number theory questions that secretly we can find on these graphs. Like one of the games we might play, and I'm gonna kill some of this stuff. One of the games we might play here, oh no. One of the games we might play here another day is something I did in a bonus video here was, um, oops, whoa, yeah, that's good. We're seeing it go fast. We wouldn't have been able to see them that fast, but it's fun. Cool. I forgot you could do that. The play button. We're going to be doing that today. The play button on them. So um, now one of the things we might try is like y equals 120 over x. Why do I pick 120? Because it's really divisible. Now remember before we were asking where circles hit grid points? Now I'm asking where this thing hits grid points. And what does that tell me? Well, if there's a grid point, that means something was able to divide 120 evenly or cleanly into another whole thing. It's telling me the factors of 120. So where does it hit? An integer that it hits is 15, 8. Yep, 15 times 8 is 120. Where else is it going to hit? 40 times 3 is 120. 60 times 2, where is that exactly? 60 times 2 is 120, and so on. So if we go far enough, we'll get 120 times 1. Where is that? Oops, I missed it. <laughs> 120 times one, and we get it on the other axis too. So we get a duplicate again, symmetry along the y equals x. We get the factors doubled, and we get another over here, so we get them quadrupled. Um, but it's still really cool. Shows us all our factor pairs in a different way. There's 12 times 10 hanging out on there. And so when we ask which grid points are on a line or on a curve, um, Last time it was telling us this secret thing about Pythagorean triples. This time it's telling us what factors a number has. And for example, if I said 101 over x, this is a prime. This is not going to hit any grid points except for itself and 1. 101 times 1 will be on here. Um, there and no none of these are grid points it's hitting it's dodging them all and how do i know that because it's a prime number no factors except one in itself so isn't that really trippy that by knowing this is a prime 
it's like it do I know it doesn't touch any other grid points and then if I type in like uh something really divisible like 180 over x I know it touches a ton of grid points um let's see there's 18 times 10 there's 20 times 9 there's tons of grid points it touches so that's trippy um let's see it slide outward maybe we'll do um a over x for our slider Ooh, we got both of them cool uh, that's pretty fun now we need to set our slider to go a little higher than um 25. Circle's gone, and it's going to come back. All right. So now that was fun. Let's add, let's do a little animation fun. Let's add some ones that'll be um, fun to add on here. So we'll say like um, y equals a times sine of x. Um, let's see what that would do. Or just kind of stretches it up. I want one that amplifies it as it goes forward. So sine of x of sine of x. Now that one's too trippy. Um, y equals a x sine of x. Is that gonna work fun? That one gets weird fast. This one's too hectic. All right. Tangent of AX squared. We like tangent. Okay, that just blacked everything out when A is that big. Yeah, it's just blacking everything out. A is too powerful when it gets that big. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's too powerful. Too powerful. Destroying everything. We need simpler functions to try and play with our animation feature. Why don't we say x to the power of a? No, but we need it to be way smaller. So now we'll say x to the power of a. Um, over a to the power of a. Whoa, uh-oh. This is going back and forth. Uh-oh. <laughs> so um we can make fun things happen with this animation what were some fun ones from before we had um the tangent of x squared was fun but why is it blacked out it's just because we're at the wrong scale maybe i don't even know where i am am i getting to the right zone okay Maybe we just need A to be smaller. Let's set A to only go up to 10. Okay, now it'll work maybe. This is pretty cool. I don't like the bit where it blacks out. Let's get rid of that. We'll go from 1. All right. And we're going to go from 1 to 20. Tan of sine of x. All right. People need to give me suggestions of what will look cool on the animation function. So... Thank you all for joining me so far. I'm going to pause on the making it run on crazy animations. We'll leave these guys off and we can have them hang out in case we want them later. So to return to the revenge of some cool functions, we need to, let's see, someone wants a birthday shout out, but it's one of those jokes. Nice try trying to get me. Good type of 
like a old school name gag, but you can't get me there. You're going to have to try harder. Um, so what we're going to try is y equaling, let's see, I want to try one that will work on the animation. So what will be interesting to try there? What if we try like y is x times the sine of a? What happens there? This doesn't do much, sine of x a. This might look cool. Yeah, now we're starting to get some good condensing weird stuff. So, now what if we change this around a little bit and we make one of them a cosine? So we're getting out here, they look the same, and then they unravel and they're actually intertwined. Now, what we'll try here is making one a little crazy. Whoa, that's weird looking. So yeah, the tan might be a little too much. Maybe we'll hide it in a sign. Whoa, now it's just extra clumpy. Whoa, that's crazy. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to have fun with this animation feature. All right. Someone's wondering what time it is. It is 7 p.m. right now. Um, had a busy day. Today I did a live stream with the... Um, like cactus fruit and ran I still have the rest of the cactus fruit here from the earlier stream for anyone who didn't see that we opened this and ate some um, maybe we'll have another bite later and then I taught some private lessons and then I finished editing a main channel episode and if anyone hasn't seen that for any reason after you watch this stream go to the main combo class YouTube channel and watch my new episode about dice um, and now we are doing some streaming and finding out what our potential of our animations is. What about one over sine of XA? What if I put an A there? These are kind of fun, but we can get rid of them and try some new stuff from scratch. So, why don't we start with trying, what does it look like when we um, do their extra weird ones? So, we're just going to start, these have a lot of cool options we haven't found yet. So, let's just try the negative ones here. What do these look like? So. What if we bury something in there? That's interesting. All right. <laughs> We're making just these weird little short sticks when you add stuff and then they just shift the sticks. <laughs> so, um, anyone got any suggestions for cool ones? Someone said x to the tan of ax. I don't, oh, oops, wait, x to the power of tan of ax. I don't have as many of these planned right now because I mostly wanted to do my thing about the Pythagorean triples, so now we're just going to see what we can find. And there's going to be some cool stuff, don't worry. That looks pretty cool. Let's see what it does. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Zooming around. Let's leave that on the screen. And now what we could also do if we would need to make a clone of it, could we make a negative version? Look, we made it have an extra side. 
Now, let's see. Can, what happens if I... Um, how do I make it flip over there? That might be hard. I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, but this makes another weird trail of it. Let's see what happens when we try all the combos. All right, you guys ready? Whoa! You ready? Oh, okay. Now also, I have this going on steps of one. Let's see what if we have smaller steps. Yeah, that's better, because now we can actually see it move and dance. Whoa! Okay, that's cool. Look, we're creating all these weird loops that are absorbing. Whoa! Um, cool. Yeah, and we could try floor on some of them. Floor does weird stuff. Someone mentioned that. Um, let's see. So how can we try some more variations? What if we make some of these sign instead? What if we make all of them sign? All right, you ready to see a new dance? Whoa. You, that's cool looking. All right, now cosine's probably gonna be pretty similar, but we could try the other weird ones maybe. Is this gonna do anything? Nah. We'll do a mix maybe. What if we do a combo? So what if we, yeah, let's add a few things. We're gonna just go a little crazier on these. <laughs> these look so trippy. That is wild. Oh my God. So, um, thank you to all the people meeting the comments. Someone's wondering about finding an intersection point of two things. We can always try that out. It's a fun thing to try out. Um, so we'll pause these. Do, 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 do. Now, they're wondering about the intersection point of e to the x, which is there and one over X. Boo, 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 boo. Well, it's right there. Now, if we need to find out when they're equal, then we could say, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to do the calculation right now, but you could use your equations of those to mix them together. And if we want to know the approximations of the coordinate, that is it. Um, these are both very interesting graphs because 1 over x is the one that's sort of like why you can't divide 1 by 0, hinting at both sides there. In fact, I have this graph to thank for a lot. This graph got a lot of you guys here probably. Um, my divide by 0 error short that is about this shape is the most viewed combo class video twice. It's like the, mo the most viewed on YouTube and the most viewed on TikTok. And both of those are more views than any other video by a long shot for some reason. So I have this graph to thank for a lot. Um, so thank you, graph. And e to the x is also powerful. e to the x, if we notice at 1, it's at... Do, 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 wait, where's 1? There's actually 1. We need to be at the right scale. At 1, it's at E, it turns out. Um, at 2, obviously, we can see it's at E squared. But what's interesting about the exponential function is that it has its slope at each point. Um, and are we on the right scale? Do, 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 do. <laughs> so. Um, do, 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 do. 
So yeah, this is a very important function. I'll make a video actually explaining about what's up with that one. Um, Cause I'm getting a little confused thinking about both of them at once. So we'll make videos about that one and that other one we already have to thank for a lot. Now let's try some other ones. Like I want to try some variations of these ones where we make X go to the power of a thing. So what if we start simple X to the power of this really weird uh, combo that worked before. What was it? Was it tangent of what was that really cool combo to start? We had X times, no, it was like tangent of X sine X or something. Was that it? That one's cool. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Super cool. Now, how can we get an A in this, first of all? Um, that's pretty cool. Look, we're like unwinding it. Okay, let's watch this. Whoa, we got to get that slower somehow. Look at the beginning. Um, we're just going to go to 10 because that'll be intense enough. Whoa. That is cool. <laughs> It's trippy how at the end point, it's so normal. It's just like, I'm a graph that looks straight, but not quite. And that little offness about my slope hints at this. Wild. Okay, so that was a good variation. What if we also put an A in front instead and put the X back? What will that do, if anything? Um. That's not doing anything except widening it a little bit. Oh, I need to plug in this computer. Oh no. All right, cool. So, yeah. Very fun to make all of the graphs do wild stuff. Thank you all for joining me so far. We're going to make it do even crazier stuff. Let's put a few cool ones on. We'll keep track of some of the best, even though I wiped one out. So what I was thinking is when we have a crazy one here, maybe we'll put X to the power of all that. Oops. So we have this weird one that would we'll put a to the power of that. Mm, kind of hard to observe this one's waves. Um, so this was a good one. Uh, no, wait, is a doing anything? Yeah, a is barely changing them. So let's see a to the tan ax squared uh oh whoa 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 what's happening something cake something crazy is happening i'm like really zoomed in or something what's going on i'm like stuck really zoomed in i can't get out um what's happening why am I stuck like this? This is weird. I can't zoom out for some reason. It's like glitched. So, okay. We're going to have to restart it. Okay. <laughs> Starting from scratch, we'll go to one of our classics. When in doubt, y equals tan of x squared. So simple, yet so insane. And... Now we're going to see where we could put A's in this. What was the scale now? We want, uh, let's go 1 to 10, step 0.1. Ooh, that's good. It's like the doorway opening and closing. So that'll be the start of our fun one. Now, I think it'll look cool if we even just do some of these guys expanding as we go. 
y equals 1 over a, where is that? Can we see it even? No, wait, I meant y equals 1 over a and x. We need both. That's not moving enough, though. We need a bigger amplifier. We're going to put x and a to the power. Oh, no, what's happening? x and a to the power of x. Whoa, look at this low one that's drifting off. Well, that one's funny. Whoa, <laughs> look at this. The green. Okay, let's just look at the green one for a second. This is funny how they grow. At this point, they're normal. Yeah, I want the inside to swell more. Okay, this one might not work as well. Maybe we'll do some more circles, but we'll do some mutated circles. So we add x squared plus y squared equals a squared for a radius. And if we want to do weird things with this circle, we could change some of them, but not the others. Look, x squared plus y to the 4 equals a squared. Wow, that's weird, right? Yeah, look at this shape. Now, what if we do y to the a? We get wow. half the time I'm normal. So maybe we can make y to the 2a make it work better. Maybe before a fix that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So now I'm getting these weird square rectangles. <laughs> um, what if we do it on here too? Now as I get bigger, I'm getting, whoa, this is interesting. Look, it gets, we're in here and then we swell bigger and then it like goes in back in a bit and then back out. That's weird. You see, when A is one, it's this thing that is a squircle. Um, this is actually what Apple uses for a bunch of icons on iPhones and stuff, is this. And then when we get bigger, we're getting more different types of a squircle. And then look what happens. I'm going past this point. We hit all the way out there, and then it like wants to fold back in, and it's coming back. As A is at 4, the edge is like further than when a is at like eight it's come back in a bit so what happens when we give ourselves more room to crank up this a to 100 it condenses closer back there but and it, it did get further that's trippy it like gets it gets all the way out there and then comes back in a bit so that's weird We'll put this to 20 for now. Now, that's a fun way to make them square if we want. Um, we can also, let's see. I don't want, let's see. So, uh-oh. Let's try doing distortions of the circle using... Um, the trig functions and we're going to see like what happens if we do this that's weird ooh that's cool look when a is one they're touching like that let's see it play oh, that was a while to go but yeah and then they come back and touch that's trippy what if we put a cosine on this one too Whoa! What? What? That is crazy. Is that actually what's going on here? Oh my god. What the heck have we found? What have we found? This is the craziest realm. Oh my God, this is weird. This is really cool. Oh my God, this is the craziest realm. Now here's the craziest thing. 
this is only for one value of a what's gonna happen when a changes okay you ready okay it didn't do anything crazy a only worked at one place it doesn't seem to work there yeah oh there we go it worked when it's one did a work for any other values yeah they like shrunk oh they're shrinking when a is higher yeah they shrunk what if we let a go smaller at zero whoa when a is zero they touch whoa it's having trouble drawing it but that's when a is zero and then as we go forward they separate is it possible for a to be negative let's see yeah It's doing the same pattern in reverse. So let's say like, let's see the dance from um, negative three to three. Yeah, this one's really crazy. Okay, so we're gonna put A back to one And now let's see if we, the last thing we have to try is putting a cosine on there. And yeah, that does add some extra craziness possibly. Does that help this? Ooh, it gives it more mutation room. It seems when we add the cosine on the a squared too, we can get to other realms. I need a bigger range now. It's having trouble doing the animation because it's overloading their graph. But whoa, look at all these weird realms that are all that equation. That's one equation. That is so crazy. So that was cosine land. What if we try, it'll probably be similar, but if we replace these all with sine. Ooh, that one's cool. Anything fun going on there? Whoa. This is so cool. Look at these. Look at this. This is equation is. Well, let's put it at a more like normal ish value, like an integer up here so we can give it a simple one. This is this landscape is the cosine of x, the points where the cosine of x squared plus the sine of y squared is the sine of three squared. Because we have a at three right there. Or the, so three squared is nine. So this is the, whatever the sine of nine is, that's, these are the points where that equals nine. Um, so that's trippy. I don't think we necessarily need it on the last term. I don't think that's going to change much. Um, wait, it did. It just changed where we need it almost. Yeah. Because, yeah, now it's the same shape somewhere else. Because the sine of a constant or cosine would just be another like constant, not have the x or y. So now let's make one of these sine. Okay, that's cool. We got a new type of landscape. This one, they're both signs. Isn't this just crazy that this landscape is... This landscape is when sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals 1. I could have just, like, here when a, a squared is 1, so we could write it like that too. Like, you see, sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals 1 is this. That is absolutely insane. Okay, when any hater tries to tell you that math is boring, you can show them that 
sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals one is this. Wow. It's okay, I gotta check your comments. I have been lacking on the comments. Um, really lacking on them. Uh, let's see. Thank you to all of you. I'm not going to be able to answer all of them. Um, but um, I do really appreciate them, even if I'm not able to answer all the questions. Um, so, and someone's wondering if Squircle's actually a word. Why not? I think, I don't know how official it is, but it should be good. Um, someone's giving a good recommendation for something when we vary A, so we're just going to silence. Uh, we'll put this back to A squared. And actually, we have one more experiment I have to try first, tangents, and then I'll do the recommendations. Um, okay, yeah, tangent's always cool, too. You always got to try tangent, too. These are so crazy. I just love how simple of the equation it is. Um, tan, okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's put a few of them on top of each other. Let's um, put the tan one and the sine one on top of each other. Oop, not sub, where'd it go? So that's one letter off. And we'll put that and we'll also put the, um, the, the one that was both sine. And we'll put one that was cosines. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's it's having too much trouble trying to animate this. We're not gonna uh, make this work with the slider. Um, so let me try one someone else recommended that then we'll remember we can substitute these for any trig function. It looks super cool. Um, someone was recommending x minus sine of x squared plus y minus sine of y squared equals a squared. What's going on? Okay, equals a squared. Oh, don't do the glitch where it makes my channel name turn to ass. What's happening? No, it's down page. It's doing like some weird shortcuts or something. Um, a squared. So now let's move A. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a bumpy out. Then we get a bumpy in, and then we collapse and we get our squircle, and we get. Yeah. So wait, let's see what happens when we start at zero. So we start out, we're getting our squirkly guy, get a nice, good squirkle. And then we get, okay, so yeah, now it's getting to like a um, oct octagon squirkle, an eight-sided, whoa, okay, there's an octagon, but squirkle type. And the wowie zowie, that's like a weird thing. And it's getting bulbous. And grows outward, and then puffs out again, and I bet. If we keep moving the A, it might be interesting. Yeah, so wait, it keeps switching which one's bulbed out. Look at that, that's cool. That's trippy. Let's watch it grow. Oh, I did a little extra loop there. <laughs> Um, so that was fun, uh, going down all the wows I agree with, definitely. Um, so, yep, you're all super awesome. Um, yeah, an octurkle is an octagonal squircle, I guess. Um, so let's try some more of these crazy ones where we put something on one of these and saw what happened. Now, I guess we do need it on both for it to work. Hmm. 
was having trouble seeing it, but yeah, it's this one. So that one was cool. And then we had sign of that, did that, sign of that, did that. And this one, let's try and see. Whoa, that's cool. Look, oh, look at that crossover right there. This is really weird. Look, so there's zero. And this is such a simple equation. This is sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals zero. And then as we go to sine, we go forward, they start separating, going towards each other. And then look at that middle one. Look what the middle one does. It like crosses over there and then you know, and they shrink. Super trippy. What if we take off one of these squareds? Now we get these iterated <laughs> runs of them. Who is having trouble comprehending the edge ones? But yeah, a bunch of them in a row. Infinite of these. Um, what if we had just taken it off the X? Other way around, infinite of them this way. So we can see that those kind of add to this in a weird way. Now what if we make one of them cubed? Could go wrong. Okay, it went wrong. <laughs> no, it didn't, it went cool. Now they're pointing a certain way. <laughs> the islands are like pointing that way. It looks like teeth. Oh my God, that's trippy. Look at this. What the heck? Oh my God. Um, oh, someone just said that, an odd function, like x cubed. Yeah, this is what it did. Um, so let's try cubed there too. Now it's really pointing a certain way. It's pointing that way, kinda. Some are, yeah, they're like, this one's definitely pointing that way. Fourth and third, okay, fourth and fourth, okay. Fifth and fourth, fifth and third. Yeah, there's like weird combos you could do, oops. Oh no, why did the power of at? Okay, yeah, it's having trouble seeing this. Um, but yeah, it's trippy, look at that. Okay, so we need our animation to just go from like, um, what was it, Z one, zero to one? No, zero to two. Yeah, we need our animation to go from zero to two. And let's make the steps even smaller if we can. I don't know if we can. Let's see if it's somehow going to let us play it. Whoa. That's trippy. That's cool. So, we could also make it go the other direction. Oh, yeah, to the why that equals a <laughs> So look, this is this equation is sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals a Nah, that's only when a is set on that. Uh, but yeah, the, this whole thing, if we count uh, this whole twist, is that equation. Is sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals a. That's pretty cool, actually. I didn't realize it was going to be that cool. I was doing it kind of for a joke, but it worked well. There we go. Cool. I meant to do a to the power of y, actually. Because um, it's going to be the other direction of like the fluid flow going from one land to the other. And it's going on the y-axis instead of the x-axis now. What would happen if we put both of them there? Whoa, now it's going the like a uh, trippy other way. Look, now it's spreading from that side to that side. <laughs> this is so crazy. I can't believe we keep finding these. This is just magnificent. Oh man. Okay. 
Um, so some people want three dimensions. Yeah, we'll try and do uh, some graphing on some other uh, way of making it three dimensional someday. One of my friends is also into um, like virtual reality type stuff, and he'll probably convince me someday to make like a combo class um, 3D some way of doing it. I don't know. Um, so checking on these ones thank you all for agreeing how insane it is um someone said we should use the opposite sign for some exponents we could try that like what if we make one of these negative two yeah that's interesting it's having trouble seeing it yeah see now there's like x there's all this like infinite dust in the middle that it has trouble seeing some of them get infinitely like dense outside and this one gets infinitely dense on the inside. So it can't zoom in without having more trouble, but zooming out, it can actually see. Kinda, then it hits other trouble on those axes. So that's pretty cool so far. What if we make both of them negative? Whoa, what's going on there? Also, I forgot our A is on a really limited range. Let's put it up to be able to go to 10. Now our A only needs to go up to five. And then, yeah, we don't want negatives on both of them. That was weird. Let's try the negative over here now. Oh, that's going to what's happening there we go mm -hmm. so we get that coolness so that was sign on both of them now that we have this a to the x y weirdness going let's try our other friends <laughs> this one's different look at that middle bit they all do different dances Someone's wondering what gave me the ideas for combo class. And I don't know. Well, I've gone into long stories about why I emerged it, but all the clocks and stuff just came out of my brain and my dreams. And because I think the clocks have much symbolism and math. So there's philosophy behind them and there's modular arithmetic and other things about the number 12 or about spinning around a wheel or clock things. And the grade negative one is because we need to go a new direction in our learning and we're going in a reverse, deeper, new, trippy direction. And uh, I've kind of gone over in other streams some of the other reasons why combo class emerged from my brain. But I don't know, grade negative one is just a crazy roller coaster, somehow working out quite well. Um, so someone's mentioning GeoGebra. Yeah, I might try that one sometime because um, they have probably higher def graphing than we could do here. So let's try, someone asked what would happen if I add pi. Well, when you add pi, sometimes it actually gets more rectangular like inside of a sine thing because it can cancel out and hit more. Like now it's hitting at the point one right there. Pi calmed it down actually, or no, it didn't. <laughs> pi didn't change that much. What if we put a pi there too? Yeah, so pi did cancel it out in a way where it's now hitting at the point one, I think, and the point two and stuff. Because, oh, this is interesting. How many of them are there in between each point? Here, look. We have one before it hits at one. We have like kind of two before it hits at two, kind of three there, kind of four, kind of five, kind of six. Is there like the amount one more each time or something? And kind of here too. It's an interesting web. Whoa. So. These are quite crazy. Don't think we need the pi in there. Um, let's make them both cosine. What's going to happen there? This one's not going crazy. Oh, yeah, it is. I always think it's not, and then I miss it. Maybe some of them want room for negative. Does it want room for negative, or is that just going to throw everything off? No, it doesn't want room for negative.
So now let's put it let's put a few on at once. Just seeing where this sends stuff. Let's send it somewhere different. What's this one? Oh, this one's okay. Oh, no, yeah, I always think they're not gonna move and then they do. Um, so, what about? What did Tangent do? Where was that? Ooh, that one's really weird. What's going on there? What the heck is going on there? I forgot. Now that we put A to the X, Y, things are different. Oh, these actually... Do these continue going and they're just having trouble tracking them? Yeah, they are having trouble tracking whatever the heck is going on here. This one's weird. Yeah, they, they can't map this. They're having too much trouble with this, but whoa. That's crazy. What if they're both 10? Whoa. I think I'm going to go back to the A being 2 thing because it looks like they often have a cycle where it's like 2 is like as much time for it to go on each side. Not exactly necessarily, because it might be a function related to pi, but there's a good amount of room for them. So that's pretty cool. Look, now I put both of them on at once. That's pretty wild. Let's make them different colors so we can see them different. That's cool. So, let's see. Even that, it has too much trouble comprehending. This XY thing is really throwing it off. What's that? That's interesting. Look, we got a little circle. This is like a out right there. That's funny. I like this one. It made a little weird little island. Um, let me take a peek at the comments real quick. Um, so, yes, lots of good comments. Thank you all so much. Um, this one's interesting. What happens if I change this? My island! Look at my island, it's grown. Yeah. Whoa, and look at the, the island has like a magnetic curve. That's crazy. Do you see like this curve that it looks like is like a magnetic wave or something coming off the island? The island, or it could be like ocean waves. The island conducts currents like that. No, don't go away. The island's tiny. I like that island. Alright, what if we went 10? Hey, Now my island's up there. When you go, hey, your island goes upward. Alright, now what if we had, um, let's see. Well, that one made it denser for sure. It changed a lot. Although I guess it didn't change much on the big picture. because This one does that eventually. Yeah, even if we just like put X there and, or no, if we put A there and increase A, is it gonna like have the darkness creep in? Um.
Yeah, the darkness is creeping in. Yeah, that's a weird stretch. So, we don't need to go all the way to 100. So. No, it's not. There's too many A's everywhere. Um, so, let's go back to messing with the circle in some different ways. Where... This is a pretty general one. This is x squared plus y squared equals a to the xy. Right now, we have our unit circle. So this is like a mutation, I guess, on the unit circle because normally the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. And so this formula does represent the unit circle when we have them equal to one, but then it also equals these weird things. Whoa, wait, where's that coming from? Where'd that come from? What the? Where did you come from? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Where did it come from? It's just flying out from infinity. So, there's the unit circle, but when I increase it from one, we get these weird guys flying from infinity and going toward my egg. And now, whoop, we touch the egg and we split the egg. When you hit the egg, it cracks and it forms two weird islands instead. And then they settle, I guess. So even that was pretty complicated. What if we even just did, did just one of them, just to the X? This looks like something that happens on these shapes called elliptic curves that are really important to analyze. That, yeah, I think it's something along the lines of like Y squared equals x cubed plus something um, plus x plus one or something yeah so it's something like that is like an ellipt I'm not sure the exact form um, and they're actually really important elliptic curves are like this super notably uh, useful weird cool thing in math so they have a lot going on in them we'll cover those at some point but it reminds me of these because there's like this cusp here that when you hit a certain value it like bubbles off um, so someone's wondering about logarithms instead of exponents in the circle formula. That could be cool. So why don't we try that? Um, instead of X squared log of X. Okay. That's an interesting one. We're getting this type of curve. What if we put the log of Y? Yeah, that's not working. Oh, we get one there. Damn, damn, damn. That worked. Uh, we're going to go back to circle mutations because what I want to try is their um, other ones, like the negative signs and stuff. So let's use their weird features. No. I want you there. So, what happens there? Oh, and actually, let's just start with a squared, because that was the normal, like, circle formula. But now we've put 10 minus 1. So, yeah, it starts circle-esque, and then, whoa, look at that. It's like a spaceship. So if you ever need a spaceship formula, here you go. Is that still a spaceship? Does it actually have like an edge over there somewhere? Or does it get infinite at some point? I can't tell if the spaceship like becomes infinite. Like right there, is it, is it just really long after this or does it infinitize? I'm not sure. Someone's wondering if I have a, if I have a PO box. Um, I don't currently, but if anyone really wants to write to me, um, any super fan can, I still have my contact email on the pages here. So you can go to my contact email 
uh, which to any super fans watching, I will say is combo university at gmail.com. And you can definitely write me an email and see if there's anything that I would give you um, any response to. I'm pretty busy, but I love uh, hearing things anyway. And I might start a P.O. box at some point. The reason I might start a P.O. box is I think a lot of people would have broken clocks for me. And so I figure, why not start a P.O. box at some point and have people mail more broken clocks? Then we can continue on our clock quest even further. Um, someone said, yeah, elliptic curve was basically what I had, but we had one extra A in there. Um, and yeah, so thank you all for that stuff. Let's try a few more weird ones like this. So that was if we put the 10 minus one there. What if we also put it on there? Is that doing it right? So now we get double trouble. And then what if we um, switch one of these with a different one? These minus ones are just making weird little shell shapes. Maybe we'll try one of these ones. That's weird. Well, this one did a strange thing. Ooh, whoa. Whoa, okay, it's having trouble comprehending this one. Yeah, this one is having trouble uh, viewing. There, there's a lot going on when it's trying to comprehend this. Let's put them both to the cosecant one and see what cosecant x squared. Whoa! The cosecant of x squared plus the cosecant of y squared equals a squared is crazy. What is it on one though? Because one's like normal. That's just like cosecant of x squared plus cosecant of y squared equals one is already insane. That is crazy. Okay, it can't even comprehend it. So we need to try, whoa, that one's pretty cool too. We need to try the other ones, which is, um, we haven't tried secant on both of them. That's pretty similar. Um, and now we haven't tried cotangent on both of them. That one's already pretty cool. Ooh, look at that. It's having trouble getting these. It's having, like, it's such a crazy graph from such a simple equation. Ooh, we get a lot of cool waves. Yeah, I need, like, GeoGebra or something to be able to handle these graphs. It's breaking Desmos. Um, and so one thing, if I have enough broken clocks, I could always have one that's correct time. Uh, yeah, well, I mean... It depends on if you say minutes or seconds. If you say minutes, yeah. Now, uh, then my clocks could be set like a hair off. So what I was thinking is that if I set one to every minute, then there will always be within, a, always within like 40 seconds or so of the right time. Um, so I'll have to do the math on exactly how well to iron that out. But because if, if I figured out how could I set it so they could always be within a minute? It's kind of like if you set it every other minute perfectly, the time would always be within a minute of one, but you can't set it perfectly. So maybe if I set it for every minute and a half, then I would know it's always within a minute of the right time. I would have enough wiggle room. In any case, the amount of minutes in a 12 hour span is 720, six factorial. Um, so, I, I do know how many clocks I'll need if I want one set for each of the possible minutes in 12 hours. It is one times, two times, three times, four times, five times, six, which is 720. Classic number. Um, so someone's wondering if we add factorials somewhere and um, we can always try that. Um, what about Let's. What was one of the super class? What happened when we when we just did sign? That was good, right? No, go. Away.
Yeah, so this was extra crazy. Now, we could, instead of squaring one of these, make it factorial something. Yeah, that one, it, it broke it to try and do this one, but it would be pretty cool. <laughs> we need, like, GeoGebra or something when we're putting all this crazy stuff in there. Um, even that one's funny. Look, sine of x plus sine of y equals 1. That is so simple. Like, yeah, let's sine of x plus sine of y equals 1. Look at all these cool little orbs I get. All these little islands. That's such a fun equation. These are good, simple ones. Why don't they teach this in school? It's that sine of x plus sine of y equals 1 makes all these islands. It's pretty cool. What about cosine of x plus sine of y? Cosine of x plus cosine of y. As expected, those do similar things. And as expected, tangent will always do something weirder. Um, all righty. Yeah. What about 2? OK, they just got a little spikier. OK. So that's fun. What if we multiply them? Well, that didn't quite work, but what if we multiply it with sine? Well, now we got wavy. This is close to the one that made the grid. Remember, this makes a grid. Grid. <laughs> funny that an equation can just make a grid like that so um thank you all yeah equations for polka dots and stuff like that some good ones someone said good morning for me it's 8 p.m but good morning to you um i love that we have people all out in the different types of time zones and realms someone's saying another fun grid pattern which is Cosecant of x plus cosecant of a equals a. And this is a different type of grid pattern, looks like. Yeah, this one gets you some circular guys hanging out. We saw in one of the last streams, you guys, if you're bored after this, we've done Desmo streams before, and we got some grids that were like half colored, like ones where you can color them like a checkerboard. So there's all sorts of wild ones here. So maybe we'll see what happens if instead of squaring these, we say something like sine of ax plus sine of yx equals a. Whoa, I don't even need to square the a. What's going on here? Whoa. This is trippy. Ooh, whoa. That is wild. What, what would happen if I did square the A? Not much. Doesn't change it in a notable way. So that's pretty crazy. So there's another one. Okay, yeah. There's another one that you could do is... Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is take the... um trig function of like ax plus oh we didn't even fiddle with a this is all it equaling one what the heck this is all with a equaling one wow so Ooh. Ooh, lots of great graphs. Ooh, this one's like melting. I, I couldn't really see because the graph had trouble comprehending that, but did you see that like melting? Oh, I'm melting. Yeah, look, it's like literally looks like it's like melt. It does. It's because it, it like starts out straight. Look at this melt. This part. It's like this is slope right there. 
And then the winter hit. Isn't that trippy? It melts. Wow. So yeah, I wish you could handle it better, but it's still doing really good. Wow, that's cool. All right. What else can we do with these? That was multiplying them too. What if we subtract them? Well, that's having trouble handling it too. Oh, and I did something weird. I meant A of Y maybe. Whoa, what's that? Is this a grid or not a grid? What's going on? Whoa, look at that. This is a weird almost grid. What? Look at that. This is such an almost grid, but not quite. Weird. I like it. Yeah, we need to do subtracting more. We haven't messed around with subtraction much. Okay, so here we got that. And now they're shrinking. Okay, okay, that's cool, look. Can A be negative on this one? Whoa, look, they fly into outer space or something? Where'd they go? Yeah, they just get, do they get bigger and bigger? And then we're just like seeing the gap in between them. Yeah, look, they shrink. They get smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger. Wait, no, they shrunk again on this side. Yeah, there's a certain range on each side of zero that they live in. Um, so, yeah, a lot of cool equations. Thank you all for joining me here. We're going to do more. And also a reminder that uh, I dropped a main channel, uh, the main comic book blast channel episode about dice today. So a reminder to anyone to check that out after the stream. Um, and reminder to check out all the cool links in the description here, like the Discord and the subreddit and the pretty new Patreon. And I think I also listed the names of those awesome supporters in this description. So, we've also got... So I hadn't even been doing the AY over here. I'd been doing something else before, I think. Um, in any case, let's start fresh. How else can we mutate the circle equation? Because we've been doing circles today. So today's main game is going to be how else can we mutate the circle equation? And I'm putting these in parentheses even though they might not normally need to be because I want to have wiggle room to put stuff in front of them. What if I put 1 over y squared? That's weird. Look, we got this really, like almost touching guys look at these x squared plus 1 over y squared that's because we are at negative 10 so 0 there's nothing but here we get these guys and then they go on either end now what if we just say x squared over y squared equals a squared? This is boring. That did nothing. All the interestingness canceled out. It's funny, you need a, like, when you're messing with multiplication, you need a, the plus mixed with the multiplication to make it crazy. Just addition or just multiplication doesn't do as much crazy stuff as when you mix them. So, Whoever said they just got here and they're late and they what's going on? Uh, later, rewatch the earlier part of the stream. We found Pythagorean triples, and now we are just having fun changing the circle equation in weird ways. This is the circle equation, and we are change this one. We can get rid of uh, changing it in weird ways to.
Create cool stuff. And we learned how to make the slider go on its own. So let's see. We have a lot of options. We could, let's even just see the squircle go around. Uh oh, that's disorienting. Okay. So let's say that what we're going to do is. Cool. Thank you for all of the new comments. You are all awesome. Um, what if we do that floor function? Are they going to understand that? Floor means that you take it rounded down. So floor of x squared. That's interesting. Look what it did to the circle. <laughs> What if we do that on here too? Oh, uh, it like killed it. It didn't work. Um, what if we put it on this one instead? It turned it into like this glitchy circle. Do you see? That's cool. All right, so we're gonna try the floor function mixed with the sine function now. Floor of sine of x. Floor of tangent of x. See, it makes it into these weird choppy guys. And then what about floor of where was the tan of x squared one? Yeah, see, look at this weird choppy version of this. This is weird. This is like the pixel version of our other one. Our other one was like this dense universe, and this is like the pixel art version of it. Um, now, what if we do the opposite? That's floor of tan of x squared. What's tan of floor of x squared? Whoa! This is trippy. I don't even know what's going on here. This is reminding me of like a super old school type video game art, all the pixels. Huh. And they just get denser and denser, I guess. And then their only way of trying to represent it is this weird chaotic corridor mess demon thing. So um, that was pretty cool. What happens if we do a sign? Well, now it's all closer, but it's still a cool little spread. This is interesting. Like, look at all these points that are the sign of the floor of x squared. Um, someone said greatest integer or ceiling function. I'm not sure um, if those are meaning the same thing. Ceiling, yeah, it does similar thing. Um, Floor of ceiling? No, I meant tan of ceiling. Um, so yeah, we get similar shapes. If we do floor or ceiling, I'm going with floor for now, but pretty similar thing we're gonna get. What about if we do like the, um, what if we bury it a little more? Tan of the floor, it's gonna be in the middle of some, of the sine of x. Wait, that killed everything. That killed all the coolness, what happened? Of X. Well, that's weird. There's like infinite stuff going on here. And then as you zoom in, you get these guys. This is like a fractal esque thing. It might even be a fractal, I'm not sure. Alright, but because when we zoom in, we're getting iterated processes, but I don't know. We'll see. So. Now, maybe we should sneak an A in there somewhere so we can see stuff move. So, tan of floor of A of X. Now we're going to move the A's. All right, and now what if we say um, floor of tan of A of X? Well, that's trippy.
Um, my opinion of spiders. Uh, they're cool, I respect them, but the big bitey ones I don't want uh, living in my zone. So, uh, pro spider, but I can be skeptical of uh, a big one sometimes because I don't want it to bite me. So, um, not my favorite out of the bugs, but, you know, they're doing their thing. Um, we got a lot of secrets of the universe. Someone says floor of ten to the power of negative one. This is what they're saying. I don't know where the parentheses are supposed to go. Um, I'm not sure what the negative one that thing means. Oh, how's my hip doing? Good question. Um, I am mostly recovered, I think, um, from that. my I still have a lot of other recovery going on. I don't know what they meant by that comment, sorry. Um, but my hip is doing okay. I'm finally getting to the point where I'm able to get out into nature a little bit again, which I sorely missed. Sorely and sorely, and sorely missed. Um, but yeah the hip surgery went okay the two of them and now i'm still going through the process of getting a lot of tests and a lot of physical therapy to make sure everything's okay but i'm able to move around and stuff which i wasn't able to do at certain points in my life so that's pretty cool being able to walk and stuff um so everyone remember to be grateful for all the stuff you got you know if you can walk try and be grateful about that there were times where i couldn't and during that time, I still managed to build combo class. Luckily, now I can walk again, so that's cool. Um, so let's do a few more of the weird circle variations, maybe. But I might have to pause the stream. Be oops, before too long. It's been—I mean, end the stream before too long. It's been a busy day. Had a lot of combo class and some other students and stuff. And I think I may film tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, we're going to film with a rare homemade clock I have back there that I really want to show the screen. But it's too much of a pivotal point of a main channel episode. I don't want to spoil it. So I'll show the back of it only. This clock was um, one of the clocks that was outside. And on the other side, it had glass that was broken as the back. And once the glass broke, I completely ended up ripping the parts off that were remaining because there were barely any and putting new things on it. So there's new cool stuff on the other side of this that I'm not showing you um, that will be in the episode I'm going to film tomorrow because some things come in 12s like clocks now how does that clock show up well it's kind of like what we're doing right now not in that it relates to any function we talked about today it doesn't relate to any of the topics really but it's another thing where an algebraic question is the same as another geometric question so circles may have something to do with that clock, but also just a geometric question the episode may be about. Well, about whatever. That's what I'll film tomorrow. And for anyone who hasn't seen yet, make sure to check out... I'm not quitting the stream yet, but once I do, make sure to check out the main channel episode that I already dropped today about dice. So we got some cool shapes going on here. This was our that but we need to put in our a now it's just having trouble seeing it what's going on maybe it's because the a is too high it's having trouble knowing anything that's going on here what's going on i thought we were able to read these ones before Oh, it's because they're both X. That's why it's being weird. What am I doing? That's where we go. Okay. <laughs> Even though it can't handle it, it's kind of cool to watch.
Okay, that one went too fast. I like this one. This is really, really cool. This equation. I'm gonna, okay, this one deserves, I wanna like write this one on my wall if I have the Sharpie right here. I don't know if, I might have brought that out to the combo classroom. Um, I guess this marker will do fine. Dry erase will do the trick on the wall for now. I'm going to write on my wall a reminder of how important and simple yet awesome this thing we found is, which is um, I need to make sure that you guys can see wherever I'm pointing at. Um, we'll write it on the wall right here. We're going to write, what was the really simple cool one? Yeah, the sign is does not. So sign. of x squared. It's sort of like a mutant circle equation plus sine of y squared. Equals and that is our mutated circle we've discovered that is just such a magnificent formula for its simplicity. So hopefully you guys could see me write that on the wall. I don't know if that was visible or not, but I wrote it on my wall over there. Um, now we have, let's put on one of my other simplest favorites because I really like the tan of x squared and I like the, wait, what was it? Tan of X sine X or was it sine of X tan X? So let's see what this animation looks like. Uh, well, the green one didn't get to live in too many zones. The green one was too restricted in this little zone. All right, that's cool. All right, let's get rid of the blue one. So I might cut this off in a little bit. Um, let me know if you guys have any more questions or anything. I'm sure I missed some in here. Um, but I do appreciate all of the comments, even if I mixed and missed any of them. Um, someone wants to try more logs and we will do that more as we go forward. Someone loves the at ass glitch that YouTube hit me with. Yeah, thanks YouTube. That's a good one. You can watch my last stream if you missed my explanation of that. Um, and yes, it was right next to the whiteboard that I wrote it. I could have written it on the whiteboard, but I needed it as a more permanent reminder of how cool a simple twist on a classic thing like a circle formula can cause such elegant infinite beauty. So I need that reminder. Someone wants me to try log, but I've tried log. It didn't do that much. Uh, well, this is a little different when I have log on one and then sign on one. But when we do log, it just did that. So log wasn't too crazy. Um, doing log on one is kind of cool. It makes that. What about if we do log mix with tan? That's kind of cool. We get that guy in the middle. Um, what if we do one of the weird ones? Uh, oh, there we go. That's kind of cool. Um, all right. So I think I have to head out now. So when that's my biggest fear, um, but eh, that would be a long story, a long philosophical episode about what fear even means. Uh, I almost died once on January 17th, 2021. And since then, I lost a lot of my fears. I also lost, unfortunately, other types of pride and stuff that I'm still working on building back. 
but I did lose a lot of fear when I already went through what was similar to death. Um, but what is fear? Complicated. I'm still fe fearful by human reaction. Every human has certain fearful human reactions, whether they like it or not. Um, so I'll definitely have some philosophical episodes about what it means to be scared of things. And conquering my fears. I love conquering fears. If you have fear, conquering it is dope. So, I mean, in a safe way. So I might make an episode about conquering, like I have that, this isn't my biggest fear by any means, but um, I get that feeling of a fear of heights when you your stomach gets weird when you're at a high place. And so I wanna conquer that one level at a time. And if we do a series on that, uh, it'll probably have to go all the way up to skydiving at the end conquering. Um, but I don't know, we'll see what makes sense to conquer when. Uh, I'm not scared of too many things these days, but yeah, like I said, humans have reactions that are fearful to things still. Um, so we will do episodes analyzing fear. Future grades may have some philosophy mixed into them and stuff, because um, I have a lot to share. I think I will cut off the stream in a moment. I need to eat some more food and work on some writing. I've spent all day on some private lessons and a lot of combo class stuff, which was fun. But I want to work on writing for some of the books that I hope to publish before too, too long. I have a lot of other types of projects to show you guys as well. And I just got to keep myself fed. Got to get some food. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen the main channel episode about dice I just dropped, you got to check that out. Super fun. So go to the main channel after the stream and watch that. Um, anyone who wants more shapes, there were two previous streams similar to this in the past week. So you can, uh, find some more Desmos streams on this channel for sure. For anyone who's super extra helpful, um, or who wants weird, cool perks involving more interactions with me or bonus videos or stuff, check out the Patreon. And for people who can't afford that, there's also still the Discord and subreddit. A lot of places the combo community is growing and building pretty cool um, so thank you all so much um, someone said try rock climbing I did kind of do that once as when I was younger I one time did do a rock climbing thing where I was strapped in and climbed up like 50 feet or something on this rock face so I, I have tried that before and that probably got me over part of the fear um, I've been on like I've like semi conquered that fear already, but um, yeah, we'll do some rock climbing someday. We'll do an episode. I have friends who are intense rock climbers who go up like crazy rock faces. Um, so thank you all so much. Love you all so much. Combo class is a place of chaos, but it's also a place of love. You can have a lot of love within the chaos. So thank you all for joining me. I'm going to cut off the stream here. And hope that some of you run over to the main channel if you haven't yet. And I hope that uh, you guys stay tuned for a lot more wild awesomeness. Because grade negative 2 is coming in a few months. But before that, we still got some wildness in grade negative 1 ahead of us. Uh, so also check out Desmos on your own. Do your own fiddling around. Uh, leave comments on this video later if you find any extra cool equations for me to try later. Thank you guys. Love you all so much. Catch some of you in the